ladies and gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Uh, uh, welcome. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, welcome to Los Angeles, California. Welcome to the Late Late Show. I am your host, TV's Craig Ferguson. There, I said it. Now, most nights I, I say it's a great day for America, and of course it is. It's just a very sad day for, for me. Um, tonight I'm remembering, uh, remembering my mother. Now, uh, like I said, I, I, don't, I don't like to, to break out into uh, vulnerability like this. I, it's, uh, but I was talking to my sister um, earlier on. And I said to her, I, we were try, I was trying to discuss what I would do on the show tonight. And she said, well, look, there, there, there's a lot of people, you know, uh, out there. We're approaching the, the holidays. A lot of people will have lost someone this year. And when you, when you get, get towards the holidays, it, it's, it's tough. You know, you, you kind of, it's on your mind. And, and so I, maybe if I, if I do that, then, you know, if, if you've lost someone this year, then I know that you're not on your own. Um, I... I I don't uh, want to do a whole monologue about this. You don't have to know all the up and downs of my personal life. I, my job's to entertain you, but I, 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 like I say, I've always tried to be honest about what I'm feeling. Uh, you know, some nights, you know, I act more angry than I really am. Some, <laughs> some nights I act more gay than I really am. <laughs> Other nights, maybe not as gay as I, I don't know. Look, right now, though, I, I'm feeling a lot of uh, different things. I, I just got back from the funeral in Scotland, and it was the same church as my father's funeral uh, three years ago. I haven't been in that church in the last three years, which, oh, but a scandal. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's St. Mungo's Church in uh, Cumbernauld in Scotland, and I have nothing against churches. I have nothing really against St. Mungo's Church, but if I don't see that place for a while, I'm okay. You know, I actually used to go to that church uh, when I was a kid, I had to walk from my uh, elementary school to St. Mungo's every Christmas. They would make us go there for services. We walked a mile through the snow, hand in hand, toddlers. We didn't have school buses. It was Scotland in the 1970s. There's no school buses, there were no packed lunches, no dental plans. You know, it was like. <laughs> We trudged through the, you know, we'd walk to St. Mungo's and we'd sit in this big drafty old church and I always thought, this is the worst part of Christmas. And <laughs> when I was sitting in the, in the church and, and when we, whenever we were in the church at Christmas time, we always had to sing this hymn. It was uh, Jesus Loves Me. That we always had to sing this hymn every Christmas. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And I really learned to hate that hymn a lot. <laughs> So you can imagine my delight when I found out what song my mother wanted sung at her funeral. <laughs> well, we, feel, we felt that, you know, every, it was the only song that everybody knew all the words, so many hymns. <laughs> you know, it's like, Jesus, but he, everybody had sung this song when they were kids. And, and my mother wanted it sung at her funeral because she was, uh, she was a teacher, you know. She taught kids. Um, so she'd heard that hymn before. My mother and I had a complicated relationship. When I, when, I, when, when I was younger, we butted heads a lot. But as I got older, I realized that there was no point, you know, in doing that. I should just do what she wants and we'd get along fine. And that's what happened. <laughs> My mother was born on August the 3rd um, in 1933. She's a Leo. So she uh, was very fierce. But she had to be. She grew up in a very... A, a tough time in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a tough environment. And she developed uh, a thick skin. She got quite tough. She's quite a tough woman, my mother. She's also very beautiful. She, uh, you know, she was uh, dark hairs, blue eyes, very attractive woman. Obviously, I took after my dad, but my mother was a very attractive <laughs> woman. Now, by the time she was 33 years old, my mother had, had four kids, um, uh, my brother and my two sisters and I. And, and uh, as soon as my little sister, the youngest, went to school, my mother took college classes. She wanted to be a teacher. That, you know, she, she, she went back to college, she, she took the equivalent of her SATs and then started studying to become an elementary school teacher. So the first thing she did after raising four kids is to go and look after, you know, more kids. And she liked kids, is what I'm saying. And she was also very interested in the arts, my mother. She was, she was very artistic. Uh, a very artistic soul, which w w was difficult 
uh, in the, from where she grew up. She grew up in a rough environment. She grew up in a, in a, in a tough working class town. So it wasn't, it wasn't really at that time, you know, what would you like to do with your career in the arts? You know, it wasn't really any of that. So, um, so she, she, but later in life, she, she really kind of developed her artistic talents. She, she had terrible arthritis, my mother, and it, it made her hands uh, very constricted. Uh, you know, it, it kind of deformed them a little bit. But, but for a long time, she would sew costumes for the Glasgow Grand Opera. You know, they were, you know, she, I know what you're thinking, it's Glasgow, how grand can their opera be? But it's, <laughs> but she did, it was an amateur uh, uh, company and they would do these operas and my mother would sew the costumes and, and, and they were great, you know. She even got my dad to uh, be an extra in the opera. He had to wear a cape and a top hat. And if you knew my father, you would know that that is no small feat, you know. <laughs> Get him to wear pants some days, you know. <laughs> and a few years ago, um, my mother took up painting. She started doing watercolors, where she would get the, the brush in her, in her hand like that, and she'd do these watercolors, uh, you know, landscapes mostly. But she painted a, I remember she painted a little sparrow, a little bird in a tree. Now, she was a true artist, my mother, so, so she couldn't really, can, you know, put, help but put her feelings onto the canvas. So she painted this lovely little sparrow. It's the angriest damn bird I ever saw in my life. <laughs> This is an angry, but if Alfred Hitchcock had seen this bird, <laughs> he'd have said, it's too scary, we can't have that in the room. <laughs> My mother was also a great talker. She had something to say to everybody. She would have been great at this job. She would have been genuinely interested in many of the things that I have to feign interest in. <laughs> um, you know, but it, she was the opposite of my father. My father was a very quiet man, uh, and, my, uh, and my mother was very talkative and very kind of... I, I get that, obviously, from her. And, and my mother and father were together for 50 years. And, and, and my dad died three years ago. And, and I used to phone home, you know, once a week. My father was alive and after. But I would phone home once a week and tell her how, you know, I was getting on in America and stuff. And if my father answered, you know, I'd, I'd talk to him. I'd tell him. And, of course, I've lived here for a long time. I've been in therapy, you know. I, I you know, I want to share my feelings with you, you know. And that, you know, and my dad's on the phone, and I'm like, well, Dad, you know, I'm feeling vulnerable. You know, certain things have happened. And he'd be like, mm-hmm. Uh, look, son, uh, I'll just get your mother, and, and she can give me all the news, all right? And he always, that became a mantra for him. I'll, I'll just get the news from your mother. And, uh, and now I take some comfort in thinking that, you know, whatever they are, they're together again. And, uh, and, and he's getting the news. We'll be right back, all right?